Hi, it's Darius. I wanted to just talk in this quick video about two things you can do to really achieve your goals and move forward really easily, invoking really what I call your divine essence, like this true power within each person to create, because we all have it. We may think we don't, we may feel like we're disconnected, but we have to do two things that are very simple, and these will get you started and moving forward in a big way. The first of which is we really have to have goals that are exciting to us, that really inspire us, that make us feel alive and fulfilled. They have to actually start to really invoke something right here. If I am thinking about a project or something I wanna do, and I'm feeling into it over and over again, and I don't feel this part, my heart energy, just start to really expand to the excitement level of something beyond the day-to-day -day mundial life, then I don't take part in it. I've had a lot of business opportunities, ideas, things that come into my awareness to do or to create or to, to make possible for people. And honestly, if I don't feel that expansion, I just don't do it because I know that if it's not really making this heart energy bigger, I don't want to do it. And it doesn't necessarily need to be like a feeling of like, oh, it's not making me feel love. It's, it's beyond love. It's this feeling of expansion, of excitement. So think about the, the way you feel before taking a big trip, right? The way you feel uh, before meeting someone you love or going out on a date with somebody you're very interested in. Or maybe the way you feel just doing something that's fun for you, going to meditation or going to exercise. Whatever it is, there's a feeling where you feel more of an expansion in the idea of this than otherwise. Most people will do things throughout their entire life just because you have to do them, and they are parts of our life where we gotta do that, obviously, but not when you're trying to create. So you should only create when you feel that energy. And the second thing is, when you think about what you're gonna do, um, it helps a lot to make it bigger, make it bolder, make it something very expansive and uh, powerful. When I did my first event, you know, my first thought was, how do I change the world? Then my second thought was, this will change the world. And I imagined some of the top people in the world being a part of it, connecting with them. You know, for me at the time, I wanted to travel. I imagined myself making friends with these people, going to amazing events and places around the world and high level seminars. I imagined myself on private islands. I had all of these dreams. You might say, Darius, that seems like a bit much, or that's very superficial, or why would you want that? But the truth is, at the time, that was something I wanted. So I was wise to invoke those things that were part of my value system. They were part of what I wanted to experience as somebody at that point in my life. And it's important, whatever you set out to do, that it's congruent with your values, but it's not just your deep, long-heard values. It may even be things like, you know, the excitement of travel, the excitement of new possibilities, the excitement of an experience. It doesn't need to be just some pious sort of like, you know, monk sitting in a temple, not doing anything or having any of the visceral experiences of being a human being. You wanna have all of those and you want your goals aligned to that. So then you start to get something called dopamine from that goal. And I wanna talk a little bit about dopamine as well because it's one of those things, the second part of this, that is absolutely misused and is actually being utilized by many of those who are in control of some of the social media sites to control our true power, to keep us locked in a hamster wheel of quick and cheap dopamine. So when we're dopamine addicted, here's what happens. First of all, we're always looking for that next level of excitement, that next thing that's gonna give us a rush. Now in today's world, the challenge with that is you can actually just turn on your phone and scroll through any social media site and get a quick hit of dopamine without actually doing anything, without actually creating anything, without accomplishing anything. In fact, you can go for huge stretches of time accomplishing absolutely nothing, but you know, exercising your, your forefinger, your thumb, and get a lot of dopamine. And that dopamine comes from a reaction, be it a good reaction maybe to something positive or a negative reaction or repulsive reaction. In fact, never in history have human beings been able to get so much dopamine 
from doing absolutely nothing, from creating nothing. So imagine you live in just a quiet village, right? And there's nothing going on. And you're in this very, you know, kind of mediocre home, no internet, not many windows, it's dark, it's very quiet, it's very contemplative. You might get dopamine by meditating. You might get a dopamine uh, release by going for a walk. You might get a dopamine release by going to your garden or helping a neighbor. And so we are becoming short wired, quick wired to basically seek out these dopamine addictions through the most easiest and shortest mechanism possible because of technology and social media. In fact, many of the designers and developers of social sites have shared that's actually how they do it. They've looked at the brain of the human being and how it actually works when people are gambling and pulling the slot machine, that reward feedback loop that happens when we pull the slot machine. Even if we don't win, that tiny pool and the anticipation that you're going to get some sort of array on that machine that's going to give you some sort of reward payment or winning is a slight dopamine rush. This is exactly what happens. So that, that's the challenge. We've got, we've got short-wired dopamine that keeps us from really taking big action. And then when we take action or we have an idea in our mind, We've got such a small view of what's possible. We've got such a programmed view through our own experiences and stories and beliefs about what's possible that it's not enough to really charge us, to really enliven us, to really make us want to do something. So here's two steps. First thing I would recommend you do, if this is resonating, you're like, yeah, this is why I'm not motivated. Yeah, this is why I don't really have the desire to go out and do things. Number one, unplug from the dopamine, short wiring, the cheap dopamine, the dopamine that is not coming from actually doing something. Scrolling through your phone, even listening to videos like this, they're great, right? You have some feeling like you're doing something good and then you feel this feeling like, wow, you know, maybe I'm gonna actually take action and learn something, great. But then what happens is, you go to another one and another one and another one. And until you replace watching with taking action, you're still creating a dopamine short circuit that is not going to fulfill you. It's only going to keep you looking for more of that cheap dopamine. It's very similar to, unfortunately, what happens to our brain on certain types of drugs. So you want to unplug from that. Unplug from that cheap dopamine. Instead, get your dopamine through exercise, reading a book, taking a walk helping someone, uh, creating something, writing in a journal, going out and doing something fun that you really enjoy doing. All of these things are going to rewire your relationship with dopamine and detox from the things that aren't beneficial. That's the key. Second thing is go out and start making some plans. Write down in a journal ideas you have, uh, things you'd like to create, things you'd like to do. Write them down so that you have a really uh, exciting thing to look forward to and think about it in a way that is life-changing, that is revolutionary, that is even bigger than the thing itself. Because someone said once that it's a lot easier to have big goals and fall just a little bit short of those big goals, but you go so much farther than if you have these tiny meteorical goals that never come true, that never really excite you, that never really enlarge you or get you to work in a space that's bigger than who and what you are. You see, there is a divine part of us that is connected to something even bigger. And this part of us has the ability to create amazing things when we tap into it. And we don't reach that part of us when we have just the goal of existing or making it through another day. That is not the human condition. That is not what we are here to do. We are here to express this bigger part that is connected to something way beyond what we think we are. And we do that by connecting into these really big and am amazing goals. Someone once called it a BHAG, our big, hairy, audacious goal. It needs to be so big, so incredible, that it excites us, it enlivens us, and we really connect into something huge. And the thought of it gives us this amazing 
dopamine release so that now we are programmed to go make that thing happen. And then every step of the way in that goal is just a huge release of dopamine so then you wanna do more. You're rewiring yourself to be somebody who accomplishes great things. Much love, uh, we'll see you in the next video. Just wanted to share some thoughts as I was uh, putting myself together for the day. Take care everyone, much love.